Welcome to the Value Investor TV podcast. This is the podcast to help you grow your wealth and become financially free. <laughs> Independent. Independent. I forgot that word. Okay. Uh, this is episode 46, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're talking about um, Netflix, continuing our conversation here. So let's dive right into it. Uh, we're just following the checklist here, guys. If you don't have it, reach out to us, info at valueinvestor.org or at Value Investor TV. For the Twitter account. Sweet. Let's get into this. Uh, so we're talking about Netflix, as you saw in the title. This is a part, this is part two of a uh, two-part series podcast. In this one, we'll talk about the financials and uh, we'll go from there. So Hari, let's dive into this one. Uh, so the first question for this bucket of questions is, does the company have enough cash to maintain its business? So what I would like to what I'd like to say is we are at a point where in the checklist mm -hmm. that we would normally stop, right? Because we've, we've evaluated that they're spending a ton of money to reinvest in content just to stay alive, to keep their business growing. That to me is a very concerning thing. So at this point we are as investors, we've stopped our analysis and we are now just going to use this time, this, you know, this episode to kind of educate you on, some of the financial stuff that we're seeing with with Netflix. So yeah. this is kind of a good refresher course for those of you who are looking at the, um, uh, you know, you're you're wondering about the uh, financial statements and how to interpret them. So we're going to spend a little more time doing that rather than going through the rest of the checklist. So yeah, uh, yeah just really quick on that note. So we kind of determined. Well, we we kind of collectively determined that it was. Not a good decision. It's uh, you know it was a red flag in the middle of our first first part of the analysis, which is the business. That because they're investing too much on the reinvestment, that there's not much money for the owners, right? Yep. The free cash. In order to get there, you know, we have to actually have to look at the numbers, right? Because in the last episode, we only talked about kind of the qualitative aspect of the business. Yep. So we we want to make sure, and you you also want to make sure, you guys listeners, you want to make sure that you want to qualify it but also you know understand it in qualitative terms yep. and quantitative terms so looking at numbers is very very important so not just don't skip over that over that part so take it away Hari yeah so one of the things that we had talked about was the definition of free cash flow right so how do we actually come up with this that they're spending too much money to maintain their business right so what I what I'm gonna do is and um you know, you can download this also off of Netflix's website. Um, if you search for Netflix Investor um, Annual Report, they have a spreadsheet that they produ produce. has multiple tabs on it. Um, and right now we're looking at the cash flow statement um, on that. So if you have the opportunity to, to look at that, I would encourage you to do so. So on that, you know, um, and this was released with the latest earnings, so December 2018, um, uh, and it was the last uh, annual um, thing that they've produced. So what you see on the that top line is the net income, right? So this cash flow statement is, you know, we are looking to generate a free cash flow, and now, uh, you know, f from that to tell us how much money is actually being spent uh, on the business, right? So remember that free cash flow is what's, you know, Buffett it uses synonymously with uh, what's called owner earnings, right? So owner earnings are if I didn't have to maintain the business, if I spent all of the money to maintain the business, how much could I take out of the business to pay myself a dividend, buy back shares, or just, you know, as an owner, just use use that to do whatever I wanted, right? That includes growth in the inside the business, right? So Netflix is kind of interesting because they're, they don't follow the same um, idea of um, cash flow from operations than minus property, plant, and equipment. They actually do. But when they spend money on content, it is not uh, cash that goes into their investing line. It actually stays in their operations. So what they have is a cash flow from operations. The net income is, uh, we'll talk about the income statement in just a minute. Um, their expenses on the net, uh, on the income statement actually are the amortization of content. So the amortization means they're not spending money on content. They're decreasing the value of their content on the balance sheet and they're taking an uh, expense to earnings. This is a non-cash expense yep. to earnings. So 
in 2018, the amortization of streaming content assets, which is appears on the cash flow statement, was $7.5 billion, right? They also have addition to streaming content assets, which is in the cash flow from operations, is $13 billion, right? So that's a negative $13 billion that's going out. And the amortization is a re- adjustment of the cash flow back because that wasn't a, an, a cash expense. It's a earnings expense. So what is very interesting is when you go down that cash flow statement, they have a positive net income because they only spent, they only expensed seven and a half billion dollars, and that's how they got one point two billion in profit. But their free cash flow, which they readily produce, and you can easily see on this spreadsheet, and they talk about in their uh, annual report, is negative three billion dollars in free cash flow. So that means in order to continue this business, right, which they're not really growing with that money, right, they're actually spending that to maintain their business, is negative three billion dollars, right? Um, it, it's a, it's a, it's, well, I should say this, it's not, it's a distinction there that we can't make it's from, from, exactly. right, we can't say it's maintenance yep. versus growth, yep. but, but the way that they have to amortize their content according to gap rules is how, when is the content consumed? So they say, most of their content is consumed up front. They release a season of uh, a show. Most people binge watch it within a few, you know, within the year of that. So most of the amortization of the content is up front. Pretty much happens within a year. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a, there is some that is extending beyond, you know, the first year. But so, so to, to summarize what, what we just said, because I, I think that, you know, there's a lot of things in, yep. you know, um, their net income there's a four billion dollar difference from going from positive all the way to negative in their net income to free cash flow, mm-hmm. right? And so it's hard for me to argue that um, the money that they're spending to to acquire content is for maintenance or it's for growth. Yeah, right? I don't know. That's hard. That's hard to very know. very difficult. Yeah, and so what I would say is. I would assume that all of it is necessary to keep the subscribers on there, right? As a conservative measure. Yeah, as a conservative measure. That means that in order, if I'm the owner of this business, I am spending $3 billion that the business is not generating every single year, or at least in 2018, to maintain, you know, to, maintain. to, keep, the, to keep this business going, right? Mm-hmm. And so what, is that, what does that mean, right? Like we talked about in this, the last example, I own this rental business, right? I'm generating tons and tons of revenue, but then I'm spending all of that money to buy my heavy equipment for next year because nobody wants old equipment. Well, nobody wants the old shows, right? They want (laughs) new ones. That's why they're buying Netflix. If I had it last year and I watched all of that, I'm not watching it again. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying $10 a month to watch it again. I want the new stuff, Mm -hmm. right? And so what you're seeing with that is their net income is positive, Right. If you looked at it and you looked at a stock database and you would see they have a positive price to earnings ratio. Yep. But their price to free cash flow is negative. And that means and that they're blowing money on it. And has uh, has always been negative. Correct. Well, since they started streaming. So right? yeah. So so, so ironically the D V D business is very profitable. Mm, right? Yeah. But yeah, so you so you're right. So once they started streaming, they've having to put more and more content. So in 2016, that additions to streaming content assets was 8.6 billion. Uh, 2017, it was 9.8 billion, and in 2018, it was 13 billion. So a huge jump from year over year. Um, and their amortization was 4.7, 6.1, and 7.5. So the the law, the, you know, the amortization. You know, when you look at a mature business, right? You, you talk about depreciation and purchase of property and plant and equipment. In a mature business, those two numbers usually equal each other. Can, in, you, can you repeat that? One more time? Y- yeah. So in a mature business, so, uh, so in a mature business, you spend a lot of um, about the same amount of money that you, it takes to replace old assets, right? So your depreciation equals your property, plant yes. and equipment. Yes. So in that case, your net income and your free cash flow are roughly the same, yep, right? Exactly. I mean, you're you're still adjusting Timing. for cash flow, yeah, and the working capital yep. changes and things like that. But for the most part, they're roughly the same. So, what does that mean in the 
uh, you know, in a growing business, though, their property plan and equipment purchases may far exceed their depreciation expense, right? So you want to look at their free cash flow and see, as a growing business, are they generating, you know, positive free cash flow, yep. right? So how that applies to this is they're no different, right? Yep. It's just in their because um, their business is the is streaming content. That content that gets produced has to come from cash flow from operations. It doesn't come in the investing uh, portion of their yeah. cash flow statement. So that's a little different. It, yeah. But it's fundamentally the same principles are applying yeah. here, right? It's just it's just uh, where you stick that in the cash flow bucket. Right? Yeah. Is it from operation or financing or is it from um, investing? Right. Right. But at the end of the day, it's basically cash coming out and shoving it back to your business. In this case, into the content. Yeah, and because it's a you know so show business, and then you know because it's a streaming business, you have it, it's part of the nature of the business that you have to create content, and that's why it's bucketed right. in operation. Yeah, and so what that means is okay. So now you, we've talked about free cash flow has been negative for several years. So how are they paying for that? So let's take a look at the the balance sheet here. Um, you know, so when you look at the balance sheet, what has happened is in 2016, at the end of 2016. Their long-term debt was three point three six billion, um, and in twenty seventeen it went to six point five billion, and in twenty eighteen it went to ten point three billion. So in, you know, in the span of three years, it basically tripled, right? So all of that free cash flow has to be, you know, to you know that's going out, right? It has to come from somewhere, right? And that's what you're seeing is their debt level is skyrocketing, right? Um, and so, you know that. That to me is a, obviously it's a red flag, right? That we are concerned about, right? And, you know, they have a, um, you know, because they've grown their liabilities, you know, their long-term debt, right? They, they, you know, that also shrinks this equity base, right? Sure. So when you look at them yeah, that's and you see the net income and you look at their liabilities, you say, oh, wow, their return on equity is like 20%. <laughs> that's really solid, but it's not two things. Two things are wrong there. Yeah. You first of all, you're looking at you're looking at return, which in this case is probably earnings. Yeah. So that's red flag number one. Red flag number two. This company is loaded up with debt, and you're only looking at equity. Right. Which kind of inflates the ROE number. Correct. So, so two things. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. So so the 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 whole point of this story here is that I'm not ragging on Netflix. I am trying to teach you guys that. Earnings are kind of a mirage, right? You have to be paying attention to the cash flow statement. And the cash flow statement tells you where the money is actually going at the end of the day, right? They're both important. The, the, mm. the income statement is important. The cash flow statement is important. Both, both are important. But what you're seeing is their accounting profits are different from their economic profits. Mm -hmm. So the accounting profits is the income statement. The economic profits is the cash flow statement. And there's a four billion dollar difference as of 2018 between those two, and that swing is actually going from positive to negative, right? And so that return on equity looks positive, but it's actually it's actually uncalculable because it's a negative free cash flow, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. It's one thing to point out. I think maybe because I'm painting this bleak picture in my head about the future of Netflix here. But let's say you're, you know, Netflix is continuously pumping money into creating more content, and yeah. that means that portfolio of assets for streaming content, streaming asset, is going to grow right. with, you know, with more years in the operations. Yeah. And so what that means is every year the amortization expense is going to go up and up and up and up. Right. And so with, let's say, the growth is growing at, I don't know, some explosive rate, amortization is growing at, you know, more or less similar rate. I don't know how that's going to trickle down to the bottom line when you have to expense or when you have to expense out so much amortization. Yeah. So, yeah the the thing that that you you're you're talking about here is why when any you 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 may have heard me say this when you hear somebody say the word EBITDA, right? You should just say that's BS, right? Just shut up. That's BS, right? Well, the reason that's BS is they're saying that amortization is not a cat. Uh, not a real expense. Yeah, not non cash expense. You're a hundred percent right. It is not a. It is not a. Uh, not real cash. Not, expense. not a cash expense. It's a non economic. Uh, it's an accounting expense. Mm -hmm. But the real value here is in the cash flow, right? And the cash flow is 
they're spending more than their amortization, right? And so w- what you're seeing is the difference between EBITDA, which is useless, and free cash flow, mm-hmm. which is very useful, right? So I want to know what I, as the owner of the business, does. I can't tell you how many analysts and all these other people say, what's the EBITDA, right? E- enterprise value to EBITDA and all of this other stuff. Well, the problem with that statement is if some businesses have Big. are mature and they have a equal depreciation to you know capital expense, and you know if, if you're trying to understand the difference between depreciation and amortization, depreciation is for hard assets, amortization is for intangible assets. So it applies to goodwill and it applies to streaming content like this, which is an intangible asset. Like you can't touch it, right? Um, so, so those the but they function the same way, right? And mm-hmm. so most companies have no amortization costs because they don't have, you know, a lot of that. Um, but they have they have this, which yeah. is uh, in, in Netflix's case, they have amortization because of their intangible yep. assets. Uh, you're you're about to say um, the depreciation cost with uh, with uh, with capex. You're talking about that. Yeah. I, yeah. Go ahead. So capex here, their capital expenditure is actually. It's just a it's in a different bucket. There is no difference in how we should structurally think about their capital expenditures versus their um you know where versus their additions to their content library. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just out of the operations budget because that's how they are required by, you know, the the gap accounting rules to to account for it. Yeah. Right? So regardless of what you're trying to to accomplish here, at the end of the day, you're you're spending more money than you're um, than you're making right on on this stuff, and that's why the the net income statement after you adjust for all of this, their cash flow from operations is still very negative, and their um, and then their free cash flow in, in also includes having to purchase property, plant, and equipment, um, which is basically nothing for them because yeah. they they rent all their servers on Amazon. Yep, um, and you know they have a building in California. That's you know where their property, plant, and equipment goes. So. They're not, sp- and, you know, and they actually also on there is they have to purchase hard assets, the DVDs that mm. they, they're shipping to people, yep. right? So that appears on their cash flow statement too. Mm. But ironically, the DVD and the l- content is basically the same thing. It's just one is a physical thing and one is a, is a digital thing, right? But as a, as a mental exercise, they're functionally the same thing, right? Sure. Whether I buy a physical DVD that yep. I'm pushing around or I'm buying a, uh, a a license to stream something. Yeah, um, it's the same same thing. It's just yeah. where it appears on this cash flow statement. So, I mean, I think I think I um. So you know, I'm 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 picturing myself. I'm putting myself in the shoe of a of a C level. Yeah. At this company, right? I think I think we're kind of done talking about the finance finance yeah. financials here. And I think I want to move move to this question, right? Uh, I think this is kind of a good learning lesson for us, yeah. To kind of do this thought exercise, which is put yourself put yourself in the shoe in the shoes of a of you know executive here at this company. You know, you have this mounting mounting debt, right? This growing debt, and at the same time, the the path to pro- profitability doesn't seem to be very clear. Right, because you have to basically take all the money that you make and borrow money to put it into the business yeah. for for some grand feature that might never might not come. Right. So what I mean, what kind of thought process goes through people like that? You know. So I, I think what you're going to have to do is cap your content uh, cost. Stop and stop the bleeding. Uh, to stop, right? Yeah. That's the first thing I would yeah. think of. Right. Stop is, the hemorrhaging. Yeah, is to to cap the content to us which i mean i think you can still produce a lot of great content right if i'm trying to turn this thing into a profitable business i'm going to set the content cap at some number right and then say maybe it's a percentage of revenue maybe it's a percentage of you know uh yeah. you, which is you know something that they can kind of predict yep. and then say it never exceeds that and that way at least i can be cash flow break even but i what i want to do is also get down some of that debt because the interest expense on that is going to now be like three, four hundred million dollars yeah, a year, yeah. right? As they keep ramping up that, and 
And I think also their cost of borrowing is going to go up as interest rates go up. Yeah, as a, as interest rates go up, and also a bank is going to look at it and say, "Guys, you don't make any money. I don't want to lose my shirt, you know, lending you money." So, what happens if, you know, you guys aren't able to produce, right? So they're going to have to pay the piper at some point, right? Can they continue to go down this route for two, three years, five years? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, who knows, right? You know, I, that, and that to me is why there's just too much uncertainty in a business like this. So I'm not really interested in the, um, what's the end game for Netflix. I'm more interested in, you know, to me, this was a learning exercise about cash flow and, you know, how other companies can do that. And, but, and it also teaches you that, you know, depreciation, amortization, are effectively real expenses, um, you know, that they have to be accounted for, right? And even though they're, you know, depreciating an asset that you already own, and that's a non-cash expense, you have to account for it somewhere. And that goes to where the free cash flow is really critical. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, that applies to if you ran your own business, right? You would want to know how much money you're making, right? Mm-hmm. And we've always said that as an owner of the business, I'm buying shares in the business. I'm an owner. What are my free cash flow? What's my free cash flow? Yeah. So, yeah, that was a you know nice rundown of the finances of this company, as well as you know kind of kind of the potential for you know what to uh, kind of what to what to uh, what to think about and you know, how to think about this kind of problem. Yeah, and uh, just one last you know kind of comment that you know we should just mention because I think a lot of people look at tech companies. You know, they they see Netflix as a tech company and stuff like that. Um, you know, their profitability, you know, they say, oh, it's all, you know, um, you know, when you think about Microsoft, right, they were shipping CDs and DVDs to their customers and they were sold in retail stores. Now a lot of services are being run online and people assume that the same metrics apply, right? But if you're running your thing online, you have depreciation and amortization expenses because you're renting servers or you're buying servers and you're doing that and you have to replace this stuff and a lot of those the server has a short life of maybe three years right so when you think about other tech businesses too it that's why it's so important to really understand the business itself because when you understand the business itself you can see how it affects your cash flow yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense uh yeah that was that was Great rundown of the financials and kind of the thought exercise of what we might do if we were, if we had the seat on the table, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Great. So that kind of concludes our discussion for Netflix. Um, you know, this, again, we're kind of going down this checklist here, value investors checklist. If you don't have it, email us again at info at valueinvestor.org or, t- or tweet us at value investor TV. Yep. Um, before we close, I want to kind of announce the company that we want to cover next week in the next episode. And that is Ulta, Ulta Beauty. All right. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a pretty interesting company with fast growing business, fast growing business. Um, we just want to do this so that you guys have some time to kind of look over their, their financials, look over one of their 10 Ks so that when we are discussing our, our, our stuff here, you guys have some kind of sense of what, what this company does so you can kind of follow along better. I think yep. that would be a better educational and learning experience for you guys. So I just wanted to point that out in this episode. And we're going to be doing this. We're going to be announcing what we do, what, you know, what, co- what company we want to cover um, uh, in, 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 such, in, the, in this kind of format. So yeah, By the way, I had no idea what Becca was going to announce. So. I know. I kept it secret. Yeah, it's, this is... <laughs> It's kind of fun. I'm glad, I'm glad I showed up today. Yeah. <laughs> Kept the secrets until the very end. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Uh, this was uh, exciting, exciting analysis uh, and more to come. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks.